This video is brought to you by Ultium 365. During this first test, the receiver side is going to be inside this room and I'm going to ask my brother to take the transmitter outside. I just want to check if the signals are powerful enough to penetrate through walls and different obstacles. Next, I came to this open location to perform the second test. Let's see from how far these modules can communicate when in line of sight. My brother is right there. Next, I came back to my home and right now I'm on the roof and from here I can see the mountain. And I'm not sure if my brother will receive the data from here. So let's go ahead and check. So guys, this is the TT Go Elora 32868 MHz V1.0 based on the SX1276 chip combined with ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth and an I2C supported 0.96 inches OLED display module. So many things on this tiny board, it's quite impressive. Anyway, I have received two of these development boards and as you can see, both modules are identical. With the help of these development boards now, I can easily test ESP32 and LoRa based projects. I don't even need to attach the OLED display module. You can use any of these modules as a receiver or transmitter. As these development boards are based on the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth, you can make IoT gateways and use your cell phone to send and receive messages, control and monitor different types of loads and sensors. Well, I have already used ESP32 and LoRa in many projects before, but this time I'm very excited about the communication range of these modules. Previously, I was using LoRa SX1278 transceiver modules, which had a range of around 118 meters, and I was able to control some loads. In this test, both LoRa modules were in line of sight. But when both modules are not in line of sight, the communication range drops to around 50 meters, which is quite low. Just look at the size difference of these two LoRa modules. This one is based on the SX1278 and this is 433 MHz and the TTGO LoRa 32 is based on the SX1276 and it's 868 MHz. Later in this video, I will perform a complete range test. If you have any business related, sales related or technical questions, you can contact them through the email IDs provided on this card. You can find the official Lilligo website link on the back of the card. I have personally visited their website and they have an amazing collection of development boards, displays, variable kits and many other basic modules. The operating voltage is 3.3 to 7 volts. Operating temperature range is from minus 40 to 90 degrees Celsius. Transmit power is 19.5 dBm 811B. 16.5 dBm at 11G and 15.5 dBm at 11N. Receiver sensitivity is up to minus 98 dBm. UDP sustained throughput is 135 MBs. It has an onboard lithium battery charging circuit. The board also has this IPX interface for connecting 868 MHz antenna. The board also has a red light power indicator and a blue light connected to IO25 which is programmable and this board can be programmed using the Arduino IDE. For more technical specifications and comparisons, read my article available on electronicclinic.com. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the pinout diagram. You can download this pinout diagram from the Lilico official website. You can see the SSD1306 or LED display module SDA and SCL pins are connected to the pins 0, 4 and 15. And the SX1276 LoRa transceiver module MOSI, SCLK, CSDI, or RSD, and MISO pins are connected to pins 27, 5, 18, 26, 14, and 19. All the other pins are clearly labeled. You can see the 5 volt and 3.3 volt pins are available on both sides. We have got three ground pins, and all these other GPIO pins can be used for connecting input and output devices. It would have been perfect if the pins labeling was done on the top side because once it's inserted into the breadboard, then the pins labels are gone. Anyway, let's go ahead and solder these mail headers and then I will explain the interfacing and programming. While doing the soldering, be very careful not to damage the OLED strip.
Mail headers are soldered on both the modules and now let's go ahead and take a look at the circuit diagrams. If you have been using Ultium Designer for creating schematics and designing your PCBs and you don't know about Ultium 365, then let me tell you about it. Ultium 365 lets you store projects in the cloud with all the documents and components you might need to complete all your tasks. To unlock all of the functionality of Ultium 365, you must first connect to your workspace, a separate environment where all your data exists. After logging into your account, you can access all of the features of the Ultium 365 platform. Let me show you how to create a workspace. Click on the Not Signed In drop down button and click on the Sign In. Click on the Register an Account. It's just a two steps process into your email ID or you can also register with Gmail and Facebook. Once you complete the registration, then come back to Ultium Designer, enter your email ID and password, check the sign in automatically box and click on the sign in button. And your Ultium 365 workspace will activate. Click on manage if you want to change your password, your information and you can also write about your experience and projects. And finally, you can click on the Save button. I will share more tips and tricks with you in my upcoming videos. I have added links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365 and Octopod, the world's fastest component search engine. On the transmitter side, I have connected a potentiometer and a button. The potentiometer middle leg is connected to the GPIO 34 and the other two legs of the potentiometer are connected to the 3.3 volt and ground pins while the button is connected to the GPIO 12. On the receiver side, I have connected an LED and I'm going to control this LED using a button on the transmitter side. I have connected everything as per the circuit diagrams. This is the transmitter side and this is the receiver side. On the transmitter side, I'm going to use this button to control an LED on the receiver side. But as you can see, I have not connected an LED on the receiver side because my other breadboard just disappeared. But I'll be sending the button state which will be printed on the OER display module on the receiver side. Anyway, and I'm also going to send the potentiometer value to the receiver where it will be printed on the OER display module. So it's just a basic setup to explain how to establish wireless communication and most importantly to check the communication range. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the transmitter and receiver side programming. If you already have an ESP32 board installed, then there shouldn't be any problem. You just need to install these libraries. But if you don't have an ESP32 board installed, then you need to install it first. And the complete process is explained in the article available on electronicclinic.com. Anyway, you can download these libraries from the same article. Anyway, once you install the ESP32 board, then you can go to the tools menu, board, ESP32 Arduino and from the boards list you can select TT Go LoRa 32 or LED. This is the transmitter side programming and if you take a look at this program you will find that it's almost 95% similar to my previous LoRa based program. The only modifications are this time I changed the pin numbers as per the new LoRa 32 development board. And as you can see, I'm using the same local address 0xbb and the destination address 0xff. I like defining the addresses this way I can communicate with multiple LoRa modules. I have already demonstrated this in my previous videos. So the purpose of this code is to read the button and potentiometer and send its value in a message. As you can see, the values are comma separated. The message is sent to the receiver side and at the same time, these values are also printed on the OLED display module. And I didn't make any changes in this send message function. Now let's take a look at the receiver side programming. On the receiver side, I'm using the same libraries and pins, but this time, as you can see, the local address is 0xff and the destination address is 0xbb. Now let's go to the loop function. First, we read the message and then we split the message using a user-defined function get value. We use comma as the delimiter. So the button state and potentiometer values are stored in separate variables. The button state value is used to control an LED and also both the values are printed on the OLED display module. 
and this is the get value function which is used to split a message i have been using this function in all my lora base projects i have already uploaded the programs and now let's watch the tt go lora 32 in action i have powered up both the transmitter and receiver the receiver side is connected to my laptop and i have powered up the transmitter side using a 4s lithium ion battery pick and my design 5 volt 3 amps power supply but you can use a single lithium ion cell anyway you can already see the button state which is zero and the potentiometer value as i press the button on the transmitter side the button state is changed on the receiver side And you can also see the potentiometer value which changes as I rotate the knob of potentiometer. The small latency is due to the delay used in the programming. You can reduce the delay time if you want fast communication speed. So it's working and now we are going to perform the range test. During this first test, the receiver side is going to be inside this room and I'm going to ask my brother to take the transmitter outside. I just want to check if the signals are powerful enough to penetrate through walls and different obstacles. During this test, I was asking my brother about his location to find out how far these modules could communicate. Then at one point the communication stopped. When I checked on Google Maps, the distance was 77 meters. This is the distance when both LoRa modules are out of sight and there are walls and obstacles in between as you can see in the image. Next I came to this open location to perform the second test. Let's see from how far these modules can communicate when in line of sight. My brother is right there and he can receive the data. I'm talking to him via cell phone. I checked the distance on Google map and the distance was 428 meters. Next I came back to my home and right now I'm on the roof and from here I can see the mountain and I'm not sure if my brother will receive the data from here so let's go ahead and check. This is amazing. My brother just confirmed he can receive the button state and potentiometer value. Although the modules are not completely line of sight, but it's working. As you can see on Google Maps, the communication range is 870 meters. This is simply amazing. It's such a long distance. I'm sure if these modules are installed at some height, they might be able to communicate over a long distance even more than 1.5 kilometers. And then you will be able to monitor your sensors or control your electrical loads over such a long distance. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.